Now that we have created our first process successfully, let's create an interactive process where UiPath will ask me a question and when I respond back, it has to write my response back to this notepad file instead of writing a static text like this. So we have two problems to solve here. First, UiPath has to ask me a question and capture my response. In other words, it has to get an input from me. Then it has to store my response somewhere to write it back to the notepad file. All right, so let's see how to do that. In order to get an input from a user, you can use the activity input dialog. Now, instead of dragging and dropping it here, let me show you an alternate way. If you just point your mouse on this plus sign, it says add activity and a keyboard shortcut is also mentioned, which is Control shift t So if I click that, you get this Add Activity search bar. And here if I type Input Dialog, I get this activity, and if I double click on it, you can see the activity is added and it has four fields here. The dialog title, as the name indicates, is the title of the dialog box which pops up. So I'll give the title as Question 1, and make sure it is in double quotes. This is a thumb rule. A text should always be inside double quotes. Input label is the text that appears above the input field, and that is where we will specify the question. So I'll type the question, what is your name? Again, within double quotes. The input type is the type of field which you want to set for the user to respond. You have two options. You can either set a text box or a multiple choice option. In this case, since the user has to type their name, we can leave it as text box. Finally, the value entered is a field to specify where you want to store the user's response so that you can use it later to write it to the notepad. And that is where the concept variable comes into picture. A variable is like a container in which you can store some data which can be of any type, such as a text, a number, a date, a list, and so on. You can also give a name for the variable. In our case, we want to store the user's response into a variable. In order to create a variable, click the Variables tab and click here where it says create variable and a variable is created with the name variable one but i would like to give a more meaningful name so i'll rename this to first name and i'll leave the default values for these three fields variable type scope and default we'll discuss those concepts in detail shortly now that we have created this variable let's specify it in the value entered field so if i start typing the variable name you can see UiPath's IntelliSense automatically suggesting the variable name. This little icon here indicates that this is a variable. So I don't have to type the entire variable name. Instead, if I just hit the Enter or Tab key, it automatically populates a variable name. And you might have also noticed that the variable name is not within double quotes. That is why it is very important to use double quotes when you're typing a text in order to differentiate it from programming language specific things like variables, functions, etc. All right, now that our response will be stored in this first name variable, we want UiPath to use that instead of this static text. So I'll delete this and type first name. Now let's save the process and run it. If you see an asterisk here on the tab, it means the process is not yet saved. So we can save it either by pressing the save button here or using the keyboard shortcut Control S, just like most of the other Windows programs. Alternatively, if you just hit this debug button and run the process, it'll be automatically saved. So I'll go ahead and click the debug button and the asterisk disappeared, which means the process is saved and we also got the input dialog. On the top, you can see the title and the label as we provided. Now if I type my name, here we go. All right, so that is how we use a variable to store and use data temporarily during the process runtime. Now that's very important. The data stored in a variable is temporary, meaning it exists only during the runtime of the process and within the defined scope. Now that brings us to the topic scope of a variable. Here, if you look at this variable first name, there is a column called scope and it is set to sequence. Now, what that means is this variable can be used and will be visible only inside the sequence activity. Um, what I mean is if I just collapse these two activities, open application notepad and input dialog, you can see these two activities are contained within this sequence and the first name variable is visible only to these activities which are within this sequence. So if I click my mouse somewhere outside, you can see the variable disappeared. Now if I point my mouse over this sequence activity, it says type sequence, name sequence, 
and it executes a set of child activities according to a single defined order. So basically, sequence itself is a type of activity that executes all its child activities in the order from top to bottom one by one. Now let's add one more sequence here. And within this sequence, I'll create another variable called current year. And if I just click the scope, you get a drop down which gives you two sequences of the same name, which is sequence. So we are not sure if it is the child sequence or the parent sequence. And that is why it is crucial to give meaningful names to the activities. So let's rename the parent sequence by clicking on it. And in the properties pane, you will see the display name. So I'll rename this to sequence hyphen master. And you can see it is automatically updated here in the first name variable. Now if I click this child sequence, you can see that current here has the scope sequence, which is basically this child sequence. And the first name has the scope sequence master. You should have also noticed that when I clicked on this child sequence, both the variables are visible. But when I click the master sequence, only the first name is visible. So basically the child activity can use all the variables of itself and its parent. However, the parent activity cannot see the variables defined within its child activities. So if I change the scope of current year to sequence master, and now if I click on sequence master, you can see both the variables. Next we have variable type. As the name indicates, it lets you define what type of variable you are declaring. There are several different types of variables, but I have listed here the most common ones. Although it is self-explanatory, let me give you a quick walkthrough of each of them. String is used to store a sequence of characters, in other words, text. Int32 is used to store an integer between this range. It is called Int32 because it is 32-bit in size. Now, if you want to store an integer that is out of this range, for example, like 3 billion, then you need to use int64, which offers a range of around 9 quintillion. Double is used to store floating point numbers, basically numbers with decimal point. Boolean lets you store either true or false. Date time, as the name indicates, lets you store date and time. Array lets you store multiple values of the same data type. You cannot mix different types of data in an array. Data table is used to store data in rows and columns. For example, if you want UI path to read a range of cells in Excel or from a CSV file and store that, you will use a data table. Generic value lets you store any type of data and it is available only within UI path Studio because the Studio will automatically convert it to the closest variable type. It is not advisable to use generic value because for each variable type, there are certain functions and methods and these methods and functions may not work with a variable that is of a generic value type. Queue item is used to store an item that is fetched from UiPath's queue. We'll discuss queue when we get to orchestrator. Generic value and queue item are UiPath proprietary variable types, while the rest of them are from Microsoft.NET's common runtime library. All right, now back to our process. I'll go ahead and delete the sequence as we don't need it. Then I'll add another input dialog right after the first one. And before we fill in this one, let's rename the first input dialog to input dialog Q1. And I'll name this new one to input dialog Q2. For the dialog title, I'll write question two. The label will be what is the current year? I'll leave the input type as text box and set the value entered to current year. Now on the right hand side, you can see these fields getting populated as we fill in. So this form you see on the input dialog activity is basically just a business user friendly form. As a developer, we'll be using more of the properties pane and it is much more convenient because you can collapse all these activities and quickly review the properties on the right hand side by clicking one by one. So that is very developer friendly. I'll then add one more input dialog and call it input dialog Q3. I'll set the title as question three. The label will be how many more years will you work? And this time I'm going to create the variable in a different way. 
If you point your mouse on this value entered field, you get a plus sign here. And if I click that, you'll get the option to create a variable. Alternatively, you can press the hotkey combination Control K and you can enter the variable name here. So I'll name it as years to retire. And if I just hit enter, you can see the variable got created. Finally, I want to find the year when the user will retire based on questions two and three. So if we just add the current year and the years to retire, we'll get the retirement year. In order to do these calculations, you can use the assign activity. So I'll add the assign activity. The assign activity lets you assign a value to a variable. You can also specify a calculation or expression instead of just a value and have the output of that calculation assigned to a variable. So I'll create the variable retirement year by pressing Control K. And in the expression, I'll type current year plus years to retire. Now let's say if the user types his name as John, the current year as 2020, and the years to retire as 10, I want UiPath to type John will retire in 2030. So in the type into activity, I'll type plus will retire in the year. And I'll make sure that I give space at the start and end of the string. Again, plus, I'll select retirement year. So basically, UiPath will construct the sentence by adding these three parts of the expression. In other words, UiPath will concatenate them. All right, so let's run the process. I'll enter the name John, enter the current year as 2020, years to retire as 10, and there you go. John will retire in the year 2010. <laughs> well, it looks like John is never going to retire. So you might have already guessed what happened here. We have set all these variables as string. So UiPath treated it as a text and concatenated the two numbers 2020 and 10 instead of adding them as numbers. So let's change the variable type to in32 for all these three variables. And now you get a warning on the type into activity. And if I point my mouse on the exclamation on this text property, it says compiler error encountered processing the expression. Option strict on disallows implicit conversion from string to double. So basically what it means is that you cannot add two variables of different types. Here first name is a string, which you are adding to another string in double quotes. Until there, there is no problem. The problem comes when you try to add the retirement year, which is of the type in 32. So you first need to convert that to a string. You can do that using the two string method. If you just type a dot at the end here, you can see UiPath suggesting a list of methods that you can use. We would like to convert this to a string. So I will select to string. And if I click somewhere outside, the warning is gone. Now if I run the process, There you go, now it typed correctly, John will retire in the year 2030. All right, so this is why setting the right variable type is very important. So I hope you now got a pretty good understanding about variables and its type and scope. We'll discuss a lot more about variables and different types as we progress through this course. See you in the next video.